Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at my usual portfolio with Invest Engine, Vanguard and the two tiny rubbish portfolios with Trading 2 and 2 and Free Trade. The previous update was in April. This one is being recorded in July, the end of July and probably would be published in August. So let's start. Let's take a look at Vanguard and today I'm going to do it a bit differently. I usually go through my ISA and then through my SIP separately and then the whole portfolio. But today I will just go through the whole portfolio only. Let's see if that works any better or not. I've been investing with Vanguard since 2019. I really do like the platform, but Invest Engine at this time offers a better value for my money because of the platform fees. And so I choose to keep my old ISA still with Vanguard and I haven't changed that. But I finally did make some changes since my previous portfolio update and these changes I've been talking about for a long time, but finally I was ready to actually make them. So let's take a look and let me just explain why and what I did. Transactions. So back in April I paid for the platform. So the account fees were cleared, then I got some cash account interest and then I sold my target retirement fund 2040. I was talking about selling that fund for a long time and finally I decided to pull the trigger because I wanted to invest that money into a global fund that would be potentially performing a bit better and would not expose me to bonds but only equities. I'm not interested in bonds at this moment. I want to just focus on investing in equities. So uh, the value of those funds was almost 100,000 pounds. As you can see, this is what happened. And then I also got rid of the target retirement fund 2055. I started with 2040 and then I bought 2055 and I was still not sure about whether I should keep both of those target retirement funds and I was happy with them for a while but I thought that I really don't want to expose myself to bonds at this stage it's a long-term portfolio and equities are more important to me so these had to go and then I invested in the FTSE developed world fund now this fund is very cheap and its fees are so low that it was very attractive to me. And people very often ask, what's the difference between this fund and the other global fund that I keep in my portfolio? And the difference is that this fund does not hold emerging markets. I'm not a fan of emerging markets. I think it's something that is a very, very long-term gain. And I've been investing in an emerging markets fund for a while now, it's, and it's constantly underperforming constantly in red so I'm not too convinced I'm okay with having a global fund this one in my pension so in my SIP and not have any emerging markets in this specific global fund then I got some cash account interest again invested in life strategy 100 then more cash account interest and finally in July I got some dividends so these would go into pension, as you can see, pension pre retirement 100 pounds and then 600 pounds, then into ISA 49 pounds, 85 pounds, then 44 into pension. Dividends are not something that really motivates me when it comes to this portfolio. So usually when I get them, I just quickly reinvest them. As you can see here, so I got more dividends, 200 pounds and 9 pounds, and I quickly reinvested them both into ISA and my pension. So you can see that I bought my VEVE and then my uh, SP500 fund. And final transactions. Again, I bought Life Strategy 100 for my spare change and my account fees cleared recently. They did not go from my pension account. They usually go from my normal current account. You could have some of your investments sold off and pay for your platform fees this way. What I do instead is I just have them cleared from my current account. I prefer to keep them separate for now. So my holdings and my portfolio value. My portfolio value is 232,000 and something. And these are my holdings in both ISA and my pension. So I have my Life Strategy 100 fund. Then I have my Emerging Markets fund. As I mentioned before, it always 
underperforms. Then I have my global fund number one, then my SP500, my Europe fund, my next global fund, and that is pretty much it. Let's take a look at the performance. So this is the graph and my rate of return is 52%. This is not my annual rate of return. I always need to stress that this is just my personal rate of return. So it takes into consideration whatever I put in and whatever I took out across all those years. So don't take this number so seriously. It's not your annual rate of return. The last few months. So since April, not much movement. Now let's take a look at the calculations. So all the fees I had to pay for using Vanguard and also all the dividends I've received since the very beginning of this portfolio. The next tab is my more transparent tab. Well, at least in my view, it's just calculations. So month by month performance in numbers, not in graphs. And since April, you can see April was 2000 and 225,000 and now it's 230. First, invest engine. This portfolio hit 30K a while back, but the markets have not been great again for the last few days. And so it went a bit down. Let's take a look. Transactions. Since the previous update, I topped up with 400 pounds back in June. And then of course quickly invested that money and also I got some dividends as you can see here and again together with the spare change that was remaining in my um, portfolio as cash I invested that money immediately. As some of you might know the goal for me for this year is to invest six thousand pounds across my portfolios. I've invested 5,000 so far, so I still have 1,000 pounds to go. So my portfolio value is 29,700 something. And let's take a look at the dividends tab. So as you can see, I got some dividends back in April and then some in June, as you could see in my transactions. Let's take a look at the holdings. No changes here. Um, SP500 and then some global fund for high dividends and my Nasdaq 100 plus FTSE 100 right at the bottom. The way I usually invest my money is I take a look at my portfolio, take a look at the weights and I'm not too pedantic about it. I just choose to buy whatever funds seem to be lowest at that time or whatever strikes my fancy. My ISA with Invest Engine has been going on for a few years now and I usually promote it because I truly believe it's a good product and if you'd like to start investing with Invest Engine yourself and would like to get some money as a bonus to begin with, you can use my referral link. It's all in the description of this video and usually in the pinned comment too. And trading to and to. The portfolio value here is £360 and when I'm recording this it's going up and down because we're still in trading hours. So this is the max view. Let's take a look at the last three months. As you can see a flat line dead. I invested quite a lot of money here well over 1000 pounds a while back and unfortunately it wasn't a good choice. I'm not good with individual shares, individual companies. Maybe you are and even if you're not but you want to give trading to and to a go as a platform and you want to start with a free share again you can use my referral link that's in the description of this video and in the pinned comment. Somebody asked me under the previous portfolio if I recommend trading to and to and I said yes I do. It's a good platform and it's super versatile so you can invest in ETFs, you can invest in index funds, you can invest in individual companies so you can keep everything together. So my investments here almost everything in red apart from Unilever and again it's doing quite okay and I will be selling it off. I think with these investments, when they start just making some profit, I'll slowly also sell them off. Haven't made up my mind yet, but I think this is what's going to happen. Okay, next one is one of the rubbish portfolios with 
free trades and this is a portfolio that I have to hold on to because I have some Russian companies, Russian holdings, which I cannot get rid of. So I'm a bit stuck with it. Let's take a look at it. This is my maximum view and as you can see, almost everything is in red. Lloyd's is performing quite well and soon I will most probably sell it off. So I will gradually, but consequently and consistently get rid of this portfolio because um, enough is enough. I cannot be holding on to something that is just going absolutely nowhere. And we're done. So this is what my portfolio, my whole portfolio looks like in July 2024. I was hoping for my portfolio to hit 275k this year without many contributions from my side. So just on its own by compounding. I think this is very much wishful thinking at this stage, but we never know. It did hit 270k earlier this month, so I was keeping my fingers crossed, but now it went back to 260 something. This is the number that you could see previously in my update, and this is the number now. So slowly but surely, I'm getting into the 300k. This is my main goal, 300k. Somebody asked me again under the previous portfolio, I think it was Becky? I think it was Becky. I hope I got your name right. What my plans are when it comes to my portfolio and uh, if my situation changed and my financial freedom goals changed. They haven't. My situation definitely changed as life happens and everything changes, especially now during the cost of living crisis. I can definitely see how it affects everybody and I'm not immune to it but my goals haven't changed. 300k is my goal, it was my small goal for a while, small financial freedom goal, and I'm aiming for that. And what happens next? We'll see. For now, I really slowed down, not my talking, but my investing, and I hope to just keep that pace, so maybe 6,000k per year for foreseeable future because I want to focus on other things and I also want to focus on spending money right now on meaningful things, not on just investing and saving and doing things like that. So this is it, this is my portfolio update. You've seen my whole portfolio. I hope you enjoyed the format. I hope you liked the whole Vanguard portfolio, not separate SIB and separate ISA. But if you don't, if you didn't, let me know in the comments and I'll just go back to how it was. Whatever you're up to, it's a beautiful British summer outside, it's sunny, well, maybe not today, a bit uh, grey right now. I hope you're enjoying now because all you have is today, all you have is a present moment and despite that awareness, you also manage to contribute a little bit towards your future self. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.